Uh, a couple of questions on national security. On Syria, you, you said that the uh, red line was not just about chemical weapons being used, but being spread. And it was a game changer. It seemed cut and dry. And now your administration seems to be suggesting uh, that line is not clear. Do you risk U.S. credibility uh, if you don't take military action? And then on Benghazi, there are some survivors uh, of that terror attack who say they want to come forward and testify. Some in your State Department, and they say they've been blocked. Will you allow them to testify? Uh, well, first of all, on Syria, uh, I think it's important to understand that for several years now, what we've been seeing is a slowly unfolding uh, disaster for the Syrian people. And this is not a situation in which we've been uh, simply bystanders to what's been happening. Uh, my policy from the beginning has been that uh, President Assad uh, had lost credibility, that he uh, attacked his own people, has killed his own people, uh, unleashed a military against innocent civilians, uh, and that the only way to bring stability and peace to Syria is going to be for Assad to step down and, and to move forward on a political transition. In pursuit of that strategy, we've organized the international community. We are the largest humanitarian donor. We have worked to strengthen the opposition. We have provided non-lethal assistance to the opposition. We have applied sanctions on Syria. So there are a whole host of steps that we've been taking precisely because, uh, even separate from the chemical weapons issue, uh, what's happening in Syria is a blemish on uh, the international community generally, and we've got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect the Syrian people. In that context, what I've also said is that the use of chemical weapons would be a game changer, not simply for the United States, but for the international community. And the reason for that is that we have established international law and international norms that say when you use these kinds of weapons, you have the potential of killing massive numbers of people in the most inhumane way possible. Uh, and the proliferation risks are so significant that we don't want that genie out of the bottle. Uh, so when I said that uh, the use of chemical weapons would be a game changer, uh, that wasn't unique to, that wasn't a position unique to the United States, uh, and it shouldn't have been a surprise. Uh, and. What we now have is evidence that chemical weapons have been used inside of Syria, but we don't know how they were used, when they were used, who used them. We don't have a chain of uh, custody that establishes what exactly happened. And when I am making decisions about uh, America's national security and the potential for taking additional action uh, in response to chemical weapon use, I've got to make sure I've got the facts. That's what the American people would expect. Uh, and if we end up rushing to judgment without hard, effective evidence, then we can find ourselves in a position where we can't mobilize the international community to support what we do. There may be objections, even among some people in the region who are sympathetic with the opposition, if we take action. Uh, so, you know, it's important for us to do this in a prudent way. Uh, and what I've said to my team is we've got to do everything we can to investigate and establish with some certainty what exactly has happened in Syria, what is happening in Syria. We will use all the assets and resources that we have at our disposal. We'll work with the neighboring countries to see uh, whether we can establish a clear baseline of facts. And we've also called on the United Nations. Uh, to investigate. But the, the, the important point I want to make here is that uh, we already are deeply engaged in trying to bring about a solution in Syria. It is a difficult problem, but even if chemical weapons were not being used in Syria, we'd still be thinking about tens of thousands of people, innocent civilians, women, children, who've been killed by a regime that's more concerned about staying in power than it is about the well-being of its people. And uh, so, so we are already uh, deeply invested in trying to find a solution here. Uh, what is true, though, is, is that if I can establish uh, in a way that uh, 
not only the United States, but also the international community uh, feel confident is the use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime, then that is a game changer because what that uh, portends is potentially even more devastating attacks on civilians. And it, it raises the strong possibility that those chemical weapons can fall into the wrong hands uh, and get uh, uh, disseminated uh, in ways that would threaten uh, U.S. security or the security of By our allies. By game changer, you mean U.S. military action? By game changer, I mean that we would have to rethink the range of options that are available <laughs> to us. Now, we're already, as I said, invested in trying to bring about uh, a, uh, a solution inside of Syria. Uh, obviously, there are options that are available to me that are on the shelf right now that we have not deployed. Uh, and yeah, that's a spectrum of options. Uh, you know, as, as early as last year, I asked uh, the Pentagon, our military, our intelligence uh, uh, officials to prepare for me what options might be available. Uh, and I won't go into the details of what those options might be, uh, but uh, you know, clearly uh, that would be an escalation, in our view, of the threat to the security of the international community our allies and the United States, uh, and that means that there are some options that we might not other ex otherwise exercise uh, that we would uh, that we would strongly mm -hmm. consider. And on the Benghazi question, I know pieces of this story have been litigated, and you've been asked about it. But there are people in your own State Department saying they've been blocked from com coming forward, that they survived the terror attack, and they want to tell their story. <laughs> Will you help them come forward and just say it once and for all? And I'm not familiar with this notion that uh, anybody's been blocked from testifying. So uh, what I'll do is I will find out uh, what exactly you're referring to. Uh, what I've been very clear about from the start is that uh, our job with respect to Benghazi has been to find out exactly what happened, to make sure that U.S. embassies, not just in uh, the Middle East but around the world, are safe and secure, uh, and to bring those who carried it out to justice. Um, but I'll find out uh, what exactly you're referring to. You hired an attorney because they're saying that they've been blocked from coming to that I'm not familiar with it.